Okay, good morning, folks, and welcome to Morning Update for January the 9th. Let's begin with a review of the overall markets this morning in the pre-market. We have the Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and S&P futures up marginally. Uh, for those commodity traders out there, we're watching the U.S. dollar as we always do. We saw a continuation breakout overnight. Before I went to bed last evening, I did a quick market wrap with members and i mentioned that we were in a bull flag formation i expected a breakout we got the breakout unfortunately it's having a negative impact on the price of gold of which we have exposure to so the dollar why is it rallying with all the negative economic news well we had consumer credit which was announced for the month of november and it came in at a high not seen since 2015 and consumer spending is vital towards GDP, so traders are reading into a strong GDP number. I also have a buddy who does a lot of Fibonacci technical analysis. I defer to him on that topic. And last week we hit a very critical resistance level. I've been watching that level as well because we are in mutual agreement that if we break down below, let's go to a weekly chart. If we break down below last week's lows, we're coming down to the 2017 lows. And if that breaks, it's all over for the dollar. But in the short term anyway, especially with earnings coming out this week, we'll keep an eye on the short term picture. This is an hourly chart of the dollar. We're a bit extended here on an hourly basis. Looks like we're going to get a pullback. Let's take a quick look for our chart of gold and how it's reacting. All right, so here's our breakdown. Last night before I went to bed, we were trading above this blue line here, the 20-period moving average, and above this white line here, which marked the upper band of resistance. And I mentioned that we were beginning to pull back. I was concerned about a breakout in the dollar and a pullback on gold. We got that pullback overnight, unfortunately. But the longer-term picture is still sound for gold. So we are going to continue to build our positions here when we think the time is right today is probably not going to be the day let's get to our gold members stock chart requests this is where i review the symbols that our members submit for me to review on video the first chart up for fellow new yorker lawrence u.s steel let's go to a weekly chart first all right so u.s steel has had a massive run along with the material names since it bottomed out in 2016. We are in a rising triangle formation. Here's our lower band of support. And while this is a very bullish chart, we don't have much more upside here until we hit very, very strong resistance at 41.57. And we will probably get there within the next week or so. Now, take note of volume. Volume has been dropping off to the upside. Daily chart, a new yearly high yesterday. RSI is rising. Stokes are rising. So this 4157 level, which is here, which I just discussed as resistance on the weekly chart, is definitely within sight. So how would I how would I trade this were I of the mind to trade it? I would buy it on a new weekly high with a trailing stop loss order. That's on a very short-term basis because I think you're going to see sellers move in at 41.57. So you can only scalp a trade here. A little bit too much risk for me at these levels. Back here would have been a different story as it consolidated and then began to break out. Right now, uh, it's just a little bit too risky for me. What I would do, back to the weekly chart, what I would do is wait for a consolidation, open up my position, and then buy the breakout above this 4157 level, adding to my position. Because what the markets will have told you if we close above this upper band of resistance is that all these buyers who've been holding through this downtrend and have been gritting their teeth hoping to get back to par, they're going to sell. And they are out of the way now because we've managed to close above 4157. And then the next challenge is going to be this resistance level back here at 44.99. So again, from a long-term perspective, as a as a, a longer-term swing trade or an investment, I would wait for the pullback 
and or the breakout above 41.57. Square, weekly basis. We were very, very overbought. We've pulled back some. Let's throw some lines up here to make some sense out of this sloppy mess. Okay, same chart, weekly basis. We broke out. And when I say sloppy mess, I don't mean the stock price. I just mean the uh, the pullback here. I want to make sense of it. Where are we at after this pretty nasty pullback? We made a high of 49.56. We pulled all the way down to 34.14. So we were overbought relative to the RSI, which was above 90. And let's change this two standard deviation Bollinger Band to a three standard deviation Bollinger Band. And I'll show you when you should not buy stocks and that's when you have rsi above 90 and you're leaning into your third standard deviation bollinger band anyway so we pulled back went into a multi-week consolidation into this bull flag formation the week of january the second we broke out how was our volume a good volume breakout this is what you want to see volume with your breakout now what we're doing is we're pulling back and we're probably going to retest this breakout point. You could argue that, you know, we did that yesterday, Bob. We rallied off the lows of the day. It's not enough for me. Daily chart. Again, let's make sense of this. Throw some lines up. Okay, daily chart. Let's talk about where we were. We were above the 90 level on RSI. A hollow-filled candlestick. I talk about this all the time. A sign of indecision at the top of a trading range. Never, ever good. It's a sign of a tug of a war between bulls and bears. So we pulled back, entered a pennant formation. We broke out on January the 2nd, and now we're a bit extended beyond that breakout point. Now, we could still move up to $44 per share, but I wouldn't chase it. Volume yesterday was pretty high, and that was to the downside. So we may move up higher here to $44 per share. Me personally, I would wait for a pullback an orderly pullback and i would watch the weekly chart let's go back to it for a second and ideally you buy it at this lower band of support with a stop right below it because if we break that back down into this bull flag formation and we close there on a weekly basis it means that we're probably going to go all the way down to this lower band here you don't want any part of that so set your stop right below this lower band of support i would show patience with square wait for it to come to you patriot one technologies otc stock i've spoken about this one a couple of years ago just one of those symbols that you remember so we were in a triangle formation we were very overbought at least relative to the bollinger bands we then broke out of this triangle formation the week of january the second this week a gap higher now, what's important here is to note that you have sellers above, as noted by this wick on this weekly candlestick. We have four more trading days left to go. A lot can happen. We can close at the highs for all I know, or we can close back down and fill this gap. I don't know. So on a weekly basis, all we're doing is doing a snapshot in time, appreciating the fact that it's only Tuesday morning. The market's not open yet. We have four full trading days left to go. A lot can happen. But as it stands right now, we have RSI, which is broken out and is rising. Higher lows on both RSI and Stokes. Same deal here on Stoke RSI. Volume, very good. Even for one day this week, this is outstanding volume, assuming that buyers continue to move into the shares. Daily chart. On a daily basis, the bull case is that we broke out on RSI validating the breakout on price now i cannot buy this stock not when it's trading up and into the third standard deviation bollinger band can it move higher despite my conservative nature sure absolutely but it's not going to be a consistent rally you're going to get a pullback and you've already seen it begin as noted by the sellers moving in yesterday and selling strength Remember your overhead supply. These buyers back here sat through the sell-off on a penny stock, folks. They want their money back. It's a highly speculative bet. They want their money back. Volume, these past two days, outstanding. So we had outstanding volume on Monday, yet we sold off the highs of the day. 
that leads me to want to take a look at a one hour chart to see how we're poised to open up here. And I will caution before I get into this chart, we traded less than a million shares yesterday and that was on a very high volume day. So a very thinly traded stock folks. Let's throw some lines up here. Okay, so here is your bull flag formation. It's not a bad setup here. So if you're gonna buy it this morning, no matter what I say, then go ahead. If, you, if you're gonna buy it at yesterday's closing price or a bit lower, fine. Scratch the itch, put on a few shares, but use a stop right below yesterday's lows. Because if we break down below yesterday's lows, we're gonna fill the gap, which opened up yesterday. And that's a very conservative play. If you wanna give it some room to run, expecting a filling of the gap, fine. At least use a stop loss right below 1.17, which was prior resistance. It should now act as support. And I would add to the trade, and this is a very short-term trade. I'm using an hourly chart. Very volatile. So this is not for the longer-term investor or swing trader. This is for more day traders and short-term swing traders. And I would buy more on a breakout above this upper band of resistance on the hourly chart. Tesla, weekly chart. We're in a very tight triangle formation. We're beginning to break out on Stokes. We have broken out on RSI. We rallied through it, pulled back. We've already retested the breakout point on RSI. So we have an indicator leading price performance. We're not quite at the high of resistance yet on price. So this chart is looking good. Now, remember, there's a lot of headline risk with Tesla and earnings are coming up. So keep that in the front of your mind. We are breaking out on a weekly basis on Stoke RSI. And remember, four trading days left to go, folks. So while this chart looks really good so far this week, it could all change by Friday. We have a double bottom setup on Ultimate Oscillator. We appear poised to break out higher lows on Williams Percentage R daily chart. All right, so we have a breakout above a secondary downtrend line on RSI, higher lows being put in. And the beginning of some higher highs. Not a lot of conviction here yet, though. Stokes are rising. A very bullish day yesterday, up 6.26%. If you're going to trade these shares, no matter what I say, you're probably going to get a quick pullback this morning. You may consider scratching the itch, buying a few shares on that pullback in anticipation of a rally back and then add on a breakout above this upper band of resistance. And of course, place your stop right below this support level if in fact we do break out and then fail, we do break back down. Meaning, we close out the day above this upper band of resistance yet uh, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, next Monday, who cares? If we break back down into this trading range, it's all over. It's a breakout point failure, a bull trap, you want to stop out. GoPro, weekly chart. So this is a stock that's setting up for a, an extreme oversold stock. We are not there yet. This is a highly speculative trade, and it's going to become a stock that is driven less by fundamentals and more by headline news. The company is on the block. It's up for sale. They have gone to JP Morgan looking for a buyer. So understand what's driving these shares, and that is headline news. Now, looking at this chart on a weekly basis, you may be saying there's no way to have avoided that headline risk yesterday morning and avoided the bloodbath. There was. All you needed to do, if you were analyzing and watching the shares, take your crayon out and formulate your strategy. When do you want to own it? When do you want to avoid it? And it was as simple as putting up two little lines. Now, using my style of trading, you could have bought here November the 13th or here the week of November the 20th or here the week of November the 27th on a closing basis because we were defending this support level and use a stop right below the 7.96 level, which if we closed out the week, below that lower band of support, you really don't want to be involved with the stock because we failed to hold the support level. And in all probability, a resumption of this downtrend was at hand because the path of least resistance 
had not changed. It remained to the downside. So buying it here was very speculative. And I would have advocated only putting on a small position. Thus, if it breaks down below support, your loss is small. No psychological hurdles to overcome here. You live to play another day. So fast forward, we took out the 7.96 level the week of December the 4th. You would have been stopped out of your trade with a low of 7.89. And then you would have avoided this mess. Now, would I buy GoPro now? No way. We are trading down below critical resistance. Volume to the downside is very high. Why did we rally yesterday? I think it was for purely technical reasons. We traded all the way down to $5 per share, thereabouts, just shy of it. We were trading very low below the, and we still remain below, the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. But we couldn't close back above this prior lower band of this downtrend channel. I would avoid these shares. Can they rally? Sure, but not with my money. Now, if we see RSI, which continues to drop, go down below, let's call it the 15 level, I, I would be looking to enter GoPro as an extreme oversold trade. And that's a completely different style of trade than a continuation breakout trade or an early stage recovery trade. So while the shares, for all I know, could pop higher by a dollar today, it's not going to be with my money. Too much risk, not enough reward. And that's it, folks. Everybody have a profitable trading day. Members, I will speak to you this evening on Market Wrap, where we'll go over the day's events. Be well, folks.